A cordial greeting. Today is Monday, October 27, 2025. This is meteorologist Ruben Garcia. At the time of recording this video, it is 5.15 p.m. local time in Jamaica, where the catastrophic Hurricane Melissa will soon be crossing over central and western parts of the island. Today has been a historic day in tropical meteorology mainly because Hurricane Melissa has strengthened in an extraordinary way and currently has maximum sustained winds of 175 miles per hour, or 280 kilometers per hour, and a minimum barometric pressure of 906 MB. This makes Hurricane Melissa one of the 10 most intense hurricanes in the history of the Atlantic, and unfortunately, it is doing so at the worst possible time, right before making landfall in Jamaica. Weather conditions across Jamaica have been deteriorating throughout the day, and the situation will become increasingly difficult as the circulation center approaches the coast. It is forecast to make landfall around noon tomorrow, Tuesday. And if we look at the satellite animation, we can see how perfect the structure of Hurricane Melissa looks. I wanted to share some interesting data from today. First, during the last mission of the Hurricane Hunter aircraft, as they were about to enter the circulation center, they encountered severe turbulence when located in the southeastern quadrant of the circulation. This forced the crew to turn back and cancel the mission for safety reasons. In addition, a Hurricane Hunter aircraft measured a wind gust of 241 miles per hour or 388 kilometers per hour at an altitude of 700 feet above sea level, one of the highest gusts ever recorded by Hurricane Hunter planes. Another Hurricane Hunter aircraft reported that several birds were observed trapped in the eye of the hurricane, something typically seen in cyclones of this intensity. Meanwhile, a geostationary satellite has reported a maximum temperature of minus 4.75 degrees Celsius in the eye of Hurricane Melissa, the warmest temperature ever recorded by this type of satellite. This gives us an idea that Hurricane Melissa is at its optimal level of intensity. This means that oceanic and atmospheric conditions do not allow the system to become much stronger, although the National Hurricane Center indicates that the next Hurricane Hunter aircraft might find winds higher than 175 miles per hour or 280 kilometers per hour. Furthermore, in the 5 p.m. advisory, they mentioned that it should remain a Category 5 or Category 4 hurricane until reaching Jamaica. At the moment, the only factor that could slightly reduce the maximum wind speed would be if an eyewall replacement cycle begins. Regardless of whether it makes landfall as a Category 4 or Category 5 hurricane, the damage across Jamaica will be devastating and catastrophic. For this reason, the National Hurricane Center shares the following message. In Jamaica, you must remain in a safe shelter and do not go outside. Catastrophic, life-threatening flash flooding and numerous landslides are expected through Tuesday. The destructive winds of the hurricane's eyewall can cause total structural collapse, especially in higher elevations, leading to widespread infrastructural damage, prolonged power and communication outages, and isolated communities. Along the southern coast, life-threatening storm surge and destructive waves are expected through Tuesday. So, a direct message for the people of Jamaica, we are all hoping that this cyclone weakens a bit before making landfall and we hope that everyone is currently in a safe place. I also wanted to mention that the cyclone has been moving slightly farther west than projected, so we still do not know exactly where it will make landfall. However, any further westward deviation, as we've seen during the last hour, increases the risk for western Jamaica, including Sabana Lamar and Montego Bay. Therefore, if you are in the western half of Jamaica, be aware that catastrophic winds are expected to pass over your region. Now, I also wanted to show you the following visible satellite animation where we can see how impressive the eyewall looks. These yellow dots represent lightning strikes continuing around the center, a feature seen only in the strongest cyclones in the planet's history. In fact, Hurricane Melissa is currently the most intense cyclone of the year 2025. Now, let's review the tropical storm and hurricane warnings and watches. Of course, a hurricane warning remains in effect for Jamaica, and also for eastern Cuba, including the provinces of Las Tunas, Alguin, Granma, Santiago de Cuba, and Guantanamo. A tropical storm warning has also been issued for areas between Las Tunas and Camagüey. Meanwhile, a hurricane warning has been issued for the central and southern Bahamas, and a hurricane watch and tropical storm warning are in effect for the Turks and Caicos Islands. For all of Haiti, a tropical storm warning remains in effect. Also note that sustained tropical storm force winds are already affecting Jamaica, so power outages will soon begin to occur. As I mentioned, we still do not know the exact landfall point. Some members of the Google model show a track over western Jamaica, while others show it crossing the center of the island. All agree that it will arrive as a Category 4 or Category 5 hurricane between the morning and midday on Tuesday. Let's look at the latest official forecast from the National Hurricane Center. They forecast that the Circulation Center will make landfall in Jamaica between 12 p.m. and 3 p.m. tomorrow, Tuesday. Once it crosses land, it is expected to weaken, but unfortunately, 
It is forecast to reach Cuba as a Category 3 hurricane between Grandma and Santiago de Cuba around 6 a.m. Wednesday, with maximum sustained winds of 205 km per hour. Then, the National Hurricane Center forecasts it will move across the southern and central Bahamas as a Category 2 hurricane during the afternoon or evening on Wednesday, with maximum sustained winds of 175 km per hour. Here you can see an animation of the wind gust projection, where basically all of Jamaica will experience gusts exceeding 225 km per hour, and in mountainous areas, gusts could surpass 250 km per hour. Additionally, heavy rainfall will continue across the entire island, with accumulations between 200 and 500 mm, especially across central and western regions. Then, once it moves across Jamaica, it will continue over eastern Cuba. As shown in this animation, the provinces of Las Tunas, Alguin, Granma, Santiago de Cuba, and Guantanamo could experience wind gusts exceeding 160 km per hour between Tuesday night and Wednesday, along with rainfall accumulations between 200 and 500 mm, which could cause serious and potentially catastrophic flooding in eastern Cuba. During the afternoon and night on Wednesday, it will move over the southern Bahamas with wind gusts exceeding 170 km per hour, and for the Turks and Caicos Islands, wind gusts between 90 and 120 km per hour. In these areas, and along the path of the circulation center, rainfall accumulations could exceed 300 mm. This is truly a very unfortunate situation for the Caribbean, especially for Jamaica, where starting tomorrow, life will be very different, and it may take decades for recovery from this potential catastrophe. Here at Hurricane Info, I will continue monitoring this dangerous hurricane, and I ask you to share this video with others, especially if they are in Jamaica, Haiti, Cuba, the Bahamas, or the Turks and Caicos Islands. Before I go, I want to ask you to please give this video a like. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the channel and click the bell so you receive notifications when I post new videos. I'll see you later, and tomorrow at 8am, I'll record a new video right before the hurricane makes landfall in Jamaica. See you then!